<laughs> How many of you own an iPod or, you know, another kind of digital music player? How many of you have used those, uh, you know, stock iPod headphones, you know, uh, the iconic white ones, the ones that, you know, don't go inside your ear? Uh, do you? Some of you? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sure you've all been in this scenario. Let's say you're walking outside and you're listening to your music. Perhaps you're listening to some Bee Gees. Maybe you're listening to a, to a mashup DJ and it's uh, Karen Carpenter mixed up with a Jay-Z, perhaps. But, uh, just, you know, you're walking down the street and a big SUV or a bus rolls by and it sort of drowns out your music. Now, if you're like me, I do, I do this almost instinctively. I reach down, go to my iPod, and I turn it up to drown out the sound. I don't want to miss a beat of Karen Carpenter singing. I don't want to miss another sentence of uh, the narration on my audiobook, perhaps a new Philip Roth novel. <laughs> so, as you pump up the volume on that iPod, you're doing more and more damage to your hearing. Well, you know, not immediately. It is a gradual effect. So today, I'm going to be talking to you about ways to sort of protect your sense of hearing from damage. Now your senses are used daily, they're very important to you. You need your sense of sight to drive, to see, you need your sense of touch to walk, to make sure you don't eat hot food that, that'll damage your tongue. And especially with your hearing, don't you want your favorite music to sound just as crisp, just as clean, and just as memorable as the first time you heard it, <coughs> except uh, instead of when you're 60 or so and it sort of sounds muddy and muddled. I don't know if that's, that's for you, Rich. Yeah, I, I hope not. I hope it still sounds as good when, when, we, when we reach your age. Also, um... Hey? <laughs> also, now, some senses, they can be repaired. Uh, the most widely known one that I think uh, is common to me and you is LASIK. You know, you go to the eye doctor, they, they, uh, they paralyze your, your eyelid, you can't move your eyeball, and they give you your uh, sense of sight back. But there's no ear LASIK, as far as I'm concerned. If there is, it's not as popular as regular eye LASIK. So not all, of us, not all of our senses can be remodeled, can be remade again. So I'm going to be asking you guys today to, to turn down the volume, and I'm going to be giving you some ways that you can make it easier on yourself to not have to pump up that volume so much. I'm going to be talking to you about the need for your hearing, which should be apparent, but we'll go over it a little bit. I'll be, go over, I'll be going over a policy that works to help you keep the volume down. Also, why that policy that I'll be presenting to you is practical and useful. Why this policy is better than the disadvantages you guys might find with it. It might be a little too expensive, it might not be, it might be a little inconvenient for you guys. Why this policy that I'll be presenting is superior to other ways that you can save your hearing. And that'll be that. So, first off, why do you need your hearing? Hearing is very vital, and it also needs to be protected from things like loud noises. Uh, during an AMA study, uh, it's shown that 17% of your original hearing is lost by the time you go from 18 to about 65. 17%. That 17% of the frequencies you won't be hearing anymore that you heard when you were, let's say, 9 versus when you are when you're reaching 64, 65. Now, on the same study, there was a chart. On this chart, it showed that a rock show and a jackhammer differ by 20 decibels. A rock show is about 140 decibels, and a jackhammer is, uh, jackhammer is about 60. Now, hearing damage, more instantaneous hearing damage, while, you know, I certainly don't want you guys sitting in a rock show or by jackhammers for 12 hours a day. It does gradually eat away at the health of your hearing. Now, regular iPod or regular music player use is around 80 decibels, but up to 90 minutes a day of constant, you know, pounding that 80 decibels in your eardrums can also cause damage to your, to your ear. So while it's not painful like listening to a jackhammer, if you do it day in, day out, you're still going to lose your hearing. So here's a policy that might work for you guys. For when you know you're going to be in loud situations, like at a, at a construction site, let's say, not that you know you guys would be there every day, day in, day out, or uh, at a live music concert, you should invest in earplugs. Now, I went on Amazon, looked up some cheap earplugs. For, for a dollar plus five dollar shipping, you can get a pair of multicolored uh, earplugs that you can use day in, day out uh, for every time you go to a live music show. And for the second policy that I want you guys to try and invest in is, if you don't have them already, you know those in-ear earbuds that sort of go in your ear that you have to 
sort of push in, investing in those would be a healthy choice for your hearing. Now, why these two policies are practical? The, uh, these new in-ear earbuds are not much more. In some cases, they might be the same as, uh, you know, regular hangers. I'm, I'm not sure what you guys want to call them, but let's call them hangers. Those uh, regular earbuds that come with, uh, come with the iPod that sort of hang out of ears. If you try and run with them, they sort of fall out. Um, and they're a lot more compact than over-the-ear cans. I'm sure some of you have seen them. They, they cover your entire ear. They're kind of big, they're kind of big and kind of bulky. Now, why getting just earplugs or in-ear earbuds is better for you in the long run? Now, there are some disadvantages to these in-ear earbuds. Uh, you can lose those little rubber plasticky, plasticky adapters that sort of go in your ear that are supposed to make it more comfortable. They have small ones for small ear canals, big ones for big ear canals, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, and some disadvantages to using earplugs that some people would say using them at, uh, at live music concerts is that, oh, I can't hear the music, or, you know, you're, you're supposed to go there, you know, naked and just listen to it without any protection, but those live shows are meant, <laughs> those live shows are meant to, you know, <laughs> have those thousands of people listen to it. They can't play it at a normal listening volume. So for your own benefit, having earplugs lets you still listen to the music. It's not meant to block out the music. It's just supposed to tone it down. Now, with the in-ear earbuds, it helps your music sound better since what they do is they physically block your ear canal from anything else other than what you want to listen to. Um, it blocks that, you know, that bus that's driving by blocks out the sound of the airplane engine while you're up in the air. And you can listen to your music at lower volumes, so you won't have to turn it up a lot. Now, why doing this is a lot better than other alternatives you could go to, like, uh, I was talking to Francisco earlier about buying those over-the-ear Bose noise-canceling headphones. They're kind of expensive and they're bulky while they do do the job. What they do, you sort of have to put batteries in them because they do something else other than just, you know, let you listen to the music. They produce a frequency that's inverse to the frequency that's coming in, like, again, that bus or the airplane, and sort of negates that sound. Now, while that does work, it, it's kind of big and bulky. You can hang it around your neck, but it's still kind of big. It's not as convenient as, you know, just having a pair of in-ear earbuds. Now, those hanger earbuds that we were talking about before, they sort of fall out easily, you know, if you've ever tried to run with them. They're not so convenient, and they don't physically block your ear canal and don't block out the noise uh, like those in-ear earbuds do. One third alternative is, you know, if you're by a construction site, you can walk around with your hands like this, but that's a little awkward looking and kind of inconvenient. Uh, but, it's, you know, you don't have your plugged at hand. It's a nice alternative. So, <laughs> I'll be leaving with you guys today with this quote that sort of got me thinking about the topic. It's from the movie Children of Men. Uh, it's from the character Julian Taylor. She said, you know that ringing in your ears? She's talking to one of this characters who was just by a terrorist bombing and he was complaining about the ringing in his ears. That ee! That's the sound of the ear cells dying, like their swan song. Once it's gone, you'll never hear that frequency again. Enjoy it while it lasts. So, guys, I don't want to have to remember that E sound of the last time I'll hear that frequency again. I'd rather keep it protected. <laughs> so Gabrielle, what did you think? Um, I thought the presentation went very well. It was smooth. Um, the attention device was effective, and his signposting was very clear. Um, he moved around and engaged with the audience, and his voice was very well presented. <coughs> All right. Yeah, I thought the movements were a lot more controlled and deliberate uh, related to the way you were talking to us, maybe with the exception of some of the repetitive gestures, because you do kind of get into this thing where you keep doing this with your hands. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you want to be uh, a little, a little less um, repetitive that way. But uh, otherwise, I thought you were in good shape on all the presentation things. Very good audience eye contact and excellent enthusiasm in your voice. Uh, it's an interesting subject that you've picked. You go at it uh, from a 
particular perspective. I think you could use a little bit more development of some of the proof that hearing loss is likely to occur from simple exposure that we're not doing enough there, but you did a very good job on the solutions trying to explain and kind of follow those criteria that we talked about as an organizational structure, how to support a policy argument. So that's fine. Thank you.